Well, welcome to the latest edition of They Said What? Uh, I'm Wilson Cole, and I'm president of Adams, Evans, and Ross. And, of course, we provide uh, collection services for about 3,000 staffing and recruiting firms. And we also provide uh, AER's Backdoor Hiring Hound, which is um, uh, our uh, artificial intelligent platform that goes out and finds backdoor hires for recruiters and conversions for staffing firms. Um, this is a, a self-therapeutic blog um, that after 25 years of listening to the most moronic and asinine excuses on why uh, our clients were uh, backdoor hired with their candidates and the excuses that the attorneys and the, uh, the debtors have given us. Uh, I just hung up the phone uh, probably a few hours ago with one of the, uh, the best that, that I've actually heard. Let me kind of give you the backdrop. Our client is a recruiter. They uh, were working with a software uh, company, a startup software company, and uh, the software company needed a national sales manager. So our client uh, signed off on a contingency-based uh, agreement. Um, no retainer, contingency-based agreement. Uh, our client provided three to five uh, candidates over about a 45-day period. The CEO of this startup uh, just had horrendous, horrendous, horrendous uh, time management skills, was constantly canceling interviews, uh, was out of town at you know company retreats for two weeks uh, while they're a startup and doing company retreats. I'm, I'm not going to judge. but uh, So this thing goes on and on and on and on. Finally, our client gets an email after they set up an interview uh, for one of their, uh, probably the, well, obviously the best candidate that they had uh, supplied. And uh, the email, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, basically says, look, you're taking too long to find us talent. We're canceling the search. Well, about two days later, they hire this candidate. Um, and so uh, our client retains us, and you know, I'm kind of looking over the paperwork, and I'm, I'm just kind of shaking my head that this hasn't been paid. And I call out to the, the debtor, and the debtor's attorney um, follows back up with me. Now, let me give you an absolute, absolute fact, absolute uh, comparison Every time you are dealing with a stupid client, I can assure you that their attorney will be equally as stupid. And I'm, I'm changing the names throughout these blogs to protect their, their, uh, the, the stupidity of uh, the identities of these people. But the attorney will call him, I'm going to use the initials, not the, not the correct name, but we're going to call him Jimmy Watkins, okay? Fictitious name. But he, uh, his law firm is uh, named Watkins the Firm. He has a logo on his uh, company website that is a variation of Watkins the Firm. W-T-F. Well, I, I guess I should have been forewarned. But anyway, so I'm talking to the attorney. And uh, he, he's a younger kid. Heck, everybody to me is a younger kid these days. But anyway, he tells me, he says, well, the reason our client did not pay your client is because your client breached the contract. And it's like, breached the contract of a contingency-based agreement. Please explain to me how our client working on a contingency-based agreement, which where they're absorbing all of the risk, they're absorbing all of the time, how did they breach the agreement? And I swear, I swear, verbatim, he says, the reason that they breached the agreement is because your client did not provide enough candidates in a short enough period of time. Therefore, our client felt that time was running out and they had no other choice but to hire the best candidate that they had presented. They said, what? <laughs>